All right, so we're checking out a new model here from Happy Model. It's the Crux 3, C-R-U-X 3. So this is kind of a three inch toothpick, but um, kind of in between like the baby tooth and the TP3. So let me explain that. This is a uh, kind of an in-between product and uh, not exactly sure where this fits in, but I could probably talk a little bit about that here at the end of the video. So as you can see, it has a mount for an Insta360 Go. Um, so if you want HD footage, you can get that, but you get a lot of jello and I'll show you some clips here of while of what it looks like while I'm talking. Um, I did fly this on 1S and 2S and that's because this is the Crazy B X board uh, with 5 amp 400 EC. So it's, it's the all-in-one board that has the flight controller, uh, 400 ECs, the video transmitter and the receiver all in a single board. So that this board is one or two S capable, but they set this up to mainly be a two S machine. And that's because of the KV of the motor they chose here. So there you have gone with obviously happy model branded motors here, 1202.5, 6,400 KV motors. So uh, those of you guys that follow uh, Bob Ruge and FPV cycle, they have sort of two classes of their toothpick. Um, there's the TP3, which is the three S three inch which was basically what this is, a three inch. And then they have the baby tooth, which is a 1S three inch. So you get pretty good performance on the 1S three inch because that comes with 12, 1202.5 motors that are, I think 11,500 KV. So you can fly this on 1S and you can fly this on 1S with the Insta360 Go on top. I did test that and it flies and it flies for a long time, surprisingly on this low KV motor. Um, but on 1S, it doesn't have the same performance as, as an 11,500 kV motor. Obviously, a 6,400 kV at almost half the kV, you're just not going to get the same level of performance on 1S. This is intended really to be a 2S micro. So you kind of get like, um, you know, a souped up baby tooth at 2S at 6,400 kV on this motor and sort of a, a dampened down TP3. So if you're kind of looking for something in between instead of 1S or 3S, but 2S, maybe this is something you might want to check out. Obviously you don't have to build it. It comes pre-built, pre-tuned. Tune on here is pretty good. Um, the frame here, let's see. Yeah, the frame is about two and a half millimeters thick. <clears throat> it is a unibody frame and um, they're using rubber bands here. And they do give you a, a bunch of spare rubber bands. I think you have four, as well as a spare set of props. These are the gem fans. These are the 3018, you know, the 3018 Hurricane gem fan by Blade props. The Crazy V board, as I mentioned before, and then the camera is the um, Cadex Ant Nano. And uh, the canopy here, you can see, is the same one that's on like a whole bunch of the more recent Eugene models, like the U, I think the UR65 Pro and the AE65. Of course, this is in their smoke gray color. Um, this is a pretty tough canopy. The camera is fairly well protected, unless you hit the straight on, of course, the lens does sit up, stick out a little bit there. So it could sit back a little bit, but um, any sort of a head-on crash is probably gonna damage the camera anyway, but the canopy is gonna hold up pretty well. Steel screws here for holding on the flight controller and the canopy. The frame itself is, mm, it's not super stiff. This is not the best carbon in the world, but it is probably going to be fine at this weight and it does look you know at least on the surface appears to be cut properly um if, if you're kind of wondering how to put the rubber band on here i put it on like this i have a whole video on how to do this it is complicated to explain so i'm not going to re regurgitate that here i will link that video here in the corner and also a card or i'll link down in the video description if you want to know how to put on the rubber bands like i have done here um in this, in this way, you can either put the battery in sideways, as I've done, or you can do it front and back, kind of your choice. And the, the uh, rubber band also will hold on the XT30 connector, so should help uh, prevent the pads from lifting if you get a battery ejection. But this is, um, at least these rubber bands are pretty tough and holds the battery on real tight. Even after crashes, I hadn't had any battery ejections. All right, so let me just, uh, there's, there's just give me some weights here. This is with everything on there. Insta360 Go, the mount, 450 2S battery. All up weights 91 grams. And if we take out the 
Insta360 Go, the all of weight 72.4 grams. And if we take off the battery, comes in at 44.2 grams. I believe the advertised weight without the mount on is like 41.8, I believe. So yeah, I just decided to not take the mount off. I may, may, I may use it in the future, so I decided not to leave it on. But it does come with these zip ties. You get three of these zip ties to hold it on. And there's like these kind of grooves in the TPU here that aren't on the other side, so you know which way to put it. And I just use the zip ties to hold the mount on. But as I said previously, the, the mount here is not the greatest and you get a lot of jello. Uh, it's probably because this, is, this camera is shaking here. You get probably uh, vibrations from the motor and everything coming straight through, through up the arms into the canopy and on here. So maybe if you want to put like a piece of foam in between the canopy and this mount, um, that might help with the jello. Um, yeah, I, I really, honestly, like for something like this, I would just fly without the Answer 360 Go, unless you really are looking for HD video, um, then obviously try a different mount, try some foam, something like that. The jello is coming from the vibrations of the prop and the motor into the HD video. So, if you know, if you want to know how to fix that, that's basically what you got to do. So again, these are the batteries I use. So I use the Allen 452S, I use the Kodar 452S, they're quite similar in size and weight. The connector is a little bit longer on the coder, but the wire gauge is a little bit thinner than the outline. Performance wise, I thought they were pretty similar, even though it says outline is ADC, 90C, whatever, it doesn't really mean much. Um, I thought I couldn't tell much difference in terms of performance, at least on this model. Both these batteries seem fine. I'll link those down in the description. For 1S, I used this uh, 600 milliamp hour 1S. I got this from FPV Cycle when I was flying around testing the baby tooth and um, I'll link those videos as well for the baby tooth and the TP3 so you guys can see the weight of those. I don't have my baby tooth anymore. I lost it in a tree so I can't show you the weight of that but it's in the video so link that. I will link that video down in the description if you want to compare the weight of those. So obviously the biggest difference between those two models and this one is you know this one's like a 2S versus a 1S or a 3S although you can do 1S or 2S in this one so if you want to do 1S in this it's super quiet the tune is a little bit off. You're going to probably need to adjust it for 1S on this setup, but it's totally fine for cruising around the park if you don't want to be disturbing people again. But, you know, on 1S on this KV motor, it is not the same performance as the baby tooth on the 11,500 KV motor. So just keep that in mind, but still flyable, still plenty of fun at the park. Um, it's just not you're not going to be you know, ripping around and, you know, doing all kinds of crazy tricks. It's more just like a cruiser on 1S. If you want to do the tricks and stuff like that, fly it around on the 2S batteries you see here. So one last thing I do want to note is uh, there's going to be comments on how this board may or may not be reliable. I don't know um, what everyone's experiences have been with this particular board or any other boards from Happy Model or other companies. Um, typically you'll see comments like, oh, the, I plugged in a battery and the board blew up and burst into flames. That's never happened to me before. Um, I do know that if you run turtle mode on these and the props are blocked, then yeah, the ESCs will fry. I, I, I have, well, I haven't done any experiments myself. I have seen other people do that. Uh, what it would be interesting to know is if someone says that they know of a board that's better than this one, that is quote unquote indestructible or they've never had it fry before. Um, let me know which board that is because I would like, I'm gonna actually kind of, I'm gonna buy that board and then I will put it on a quad with props, run turtle mode on it where the props are blocked and we'll see if the uh, ESCs fry or not. So let me know if, that, is that an, if that's an experiment that's interesting to you guys or not because I, you know, I see a lot of anecdotal comments on Facebook and YouTube and such and like, well, I like to test stuff and see like what actually happens. So if there's an indestructible board out there that can survive turtle mode full throttle with the props blocked, let me know down in the comments below for something like in this class here, uh, you know, uh, this is a 1S, 2S, 5 amp ESC. So if it's a 60 amp ESC, you know, that's not in the same class. I'm talking about something in the five amp range. Let me know in the comments below if you know anything like that. And by the way, regarding turtle mode, They've actually deleted that from this quad. It doesn't exist. And I think they did that on purpose because a lot of people are using turtle mode and, you know, without knowing that the props are blocked, they're like, oh, let's just try and get out of the tree. 
and the props are blocked, and then all of a sudden the EAC pops. So if you are one of those kind of people that tend to fry your ECs from crashes or using turtle mode, then I would definitely recommend not using turtle mode anymore, because I think that is how a lot of ESC, these smaller ESC boards are getting destroyed. So just a little, you know, um, helpful information for these those of you guys out there that are having that problem. I'm pretty sure it's because when these props are blocked and you're running turtle mode and you run a lot of current that through that ESC with the motor stopped, you're gonna fry your ESCs. Anyway, enough of that. Let me uh, show you the flight footage. I'm gonna show you the 2S flight without the Insta360 Go. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. So, tune sounds pretty good. I'm not flying with the Insta360 Go in this flight. So the tune tuning envelope is pretty wide on this setup. At least seems like with a big weight difference, it still flies pretty decently. Fair amount of wind right now. Yeah, you can pretty much do all the tricks that you want. Just not quite as nice as 3S. Like on the Toothpick 3 with the 1303 motors. It's just like a step below that. So if you're looking for a little bit less speed, but pretty decent performance on 2S, really bad. And you can't fly this on 1S, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds if you want to fly 1S or 2S, depending upon where you're flying. Maybe 1S if you want a little bit less noise. Just cruise around. 2S, a little bit more speed. All right, let's try to do a little full speed here. Full speed punch out. So that's about as fast as it'll go. Full speed. And about half the battery. 200 milliamp hours out of the 450 here. This is the 450 outline. There we go, I got some prop watch to come out of there. You gotta do some big dives and then pull up hard with full throttle and then you'll get some prop wash. Problems with the receiver antenna. I'm getting towards the end of the battery now. It's struggling to go full throttle. Ah, 
Cormorants are pretty pretty hard flying. And still at 7.3 volts, I can go to probably 7 volts easy. But uh, just want to give you guys a taste. Four minutes, you can do five minutes. Five and a half probably if you're just kind of cruising around. So plenty of flight time, pretty decent performance. The versatility of 1S and 2S, but you know, it's not the same performance. You know, 2S is not the same performance as 3S, so. Keep that in mind. If you're looking for 3S performance, you're going to have to get something that can do 3S. Now, let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.